This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fires. I fully accept my present set of circumstances as if I have chosen them because I have. I'll be the Jet Puff Marshmallow Cream to your chef boy and a mini ravioli. I'm so shocked, <laughs> Madam Mayor. I mean, what a terrible C word for you to use. <laughs> wash the windows, wash the windows, get the little ones, get the little ones. IFAF, Idaho Falls Infotainment Talk Show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Yeah, can you guys stop sliding off the roads? It would make it so much easier for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know, it's funny you say that because I know it's intentional. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's completely on purpose. If you have been hit by a smooth criminal winter, <laughs> we just were so sorry that happened to you. It's happened to both of us, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, in our lives. thankfully, never too bad. But there was definitely one time I flipped a whole the whole way around. The worst part, though, was when I was driving down the street, clearly caught an ice patch, flipped, around, flipped all the way around, and then the guy behind me honked at me like it was my fault. <laughs> yeah. Like he was mad at me Are for you... almost dying. Yeah. Yeah. And I... I inconvenienced him by, like, being in peril. He didn't give you the beep beep, like, it's okay, take your time, I'll, I'll block traffic for you because I'm in your lane. No, it wasn't anything like that. Like, mm. it was clearly annoyed, and he was mad that I had, like... I, I'd gotten on the road and I'd fishtailed enough that I'd spun all the way around. Yikes. Yeah. That is terrifying. I've had that happen to well, me. Well, and it was on Woodruff and it was busy, Yikes. you know? So I was yeah. like, oh God, I'm going to die. And then this guy. And then this guy. Calls up behind me and beeps at me. <laughs> you know, and, and again, I, a little MGK, mercy, grace, and kindness and patience for the other drivers out there. Right. As you know. If you listen, last week we got hit by, well, Mikey had the man flu, Carly had the consumption. Uh-huh. You can hear me still clearing my throat. Sorry about that. But I feel <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm like 80% now. Yeah. How about you? I'd say I'm a good 95. Okay. Like my yeah. voice is more or less there, but it's got a little gravel to it here and there. You youngins bounce back. <laughs> Enjoy it while you're young. Yeah. I definitely still can't hit those Mariah Carey whistle notes, but to be <laughs> fair, I couldn't before either. So. <laughs> Oh, also, I experimented with drugs last week. I just want to come forward with that. I uh, I was out of both, so I took both a Tums and a Rolaids at wow. the same time. And I'm alive somehow. Wow. I can't believe you were able to get crossfaded on those and come <laughs> through it. <laughs> so, obviously, with the new year, I've been thinking a lot about New Year's re resolutions and what most people choose to do, which is almost always gaining or er, losing weight. Um, and the thing is, I've been very much not doing that. I've been doing the opposite for a while now <laughs> to the point where I actually had to go in my garage and grab this box of clothes I had that I'd planned to alter. Is it one of your, cause you have, I would say several vacuum packed <laughs> bags of lots of like giant, like you could fit a mattress in them. Well, to be fair, I did get a comforter set in the, in those bags and okay. then I put a bunch of clothes in it. So yeah. not a mattress, but a comforter set Yeah, all right. bedding for sure. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I went out and I grabbed, yes, this comforter bag full of clothes that I'd meant to alter because they were all good stuff that I liked. As a matter of fact, this dress included, and I wanted them to fit me. Uh, so I'd planned to alter them, but then, um, I altered my size instead. <laughs> so I just went out and grabbed them and I was just really grateful to have some fat clothes left. So I didn't have to go out and buy anything. I only have a few fat clothes. Cause I guess maybe I have an ego. Uh -huh. So I've been doing laundry twice as much ah. <laughs> because I only, cause only like, I only have a few things that fit me. Uh huh. Yeah. You threw away all your other stuff. Like, oh, I'm not going to need that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And then like two years later, you're like, oh, I really could use that now. Couldn't. <laughs> Here we are. This yep. this is rock bottom. Yeah. I threw away <laughs> a lot of clothes after I lost. So I actually lost like 40 pounds about two or three years ago. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then I gained 40 pounds like this year. You found them again? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, they, You know, it's kind of like um, when you abandon a dog on a lonely country highway. Oh, I saw the most okay, heartbreaking. <laughs> did you see that reel today or, or TikTok or whatever? No, I was just oh. making a horrible dark joke that I would <laughs> never do, by the way. But that's what your clothes <laughs> yeah. looking at you. <laughs> yeah, they were looking at me through the rear view mirror as I drove away. <laughs> and that then... is a horrible joke. <laughs> right. But but, uh, but then, honestly, like, it's an effective visual, and right. that's what we do here. Right, and then like Homeward Bound, they came bounding back at the end of the film, and I was like, 
hard. Oh, well, hey, as long as it's got a happy ending. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, isn't, we're not Hans Christian Am- <laughs> Anderson and we're not anthropomorphizing anything. <laughs> On this show. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, it's happy relationship <laughs> wait. So I think it is still a happy ending. Oh, good. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a bummer. So yeah, just so you're not worried, this TikTok video was a video of a lady who was out on a country road hiking with her dog. Her dog sort of ran away to go do dog stuff for oh, a yeah. minute. Yeah. So she decided to hide. <laughs> and when he came back and was looking for her, it was just heartbreaking. He oh. looked left. He looked right. He ran left. He ran right. Oh. Oh, so, you know, people who um, abandon their animals on the side of a country road are just bastards with bastard filling and <laughs> bastard coating. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's just so sad. But, but the I'm video glad, I saw. Yeah, I'm glad the that was okay. okay in the end. A few follow-ups from last week. Mike's elderly neighbor is okay. Oh, I good. was able to check on her. She didn't answer the door the first time. Mm-hmm. Went Came back uh, half an hour later, so... And she answered the door. Hey, just checking on you. Everything cool? Yep. Yeah. Um, I said, okay, sometimes I see packages pile up and I worry about you and your Papillon. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah not Papillon. Pomeranian, not Pekingese, Papillon. Yes. And she said, yeah, I, I totally have puppy pads and it's cool with me. Okay. I'm like, okay. All right. And I even said, let me know if you want me to take out your trash. Oh, that was nice. You know, that's such a good man chore to do. Yeah. It, yeah. it really is. Not to assign um, gender uh, roles traditional, to chores. outdated gender roles, but it is. Right. I yeah. don't mind. Yeah. I got to take mine out. Well, and realistically, she's an old lady. Like, she doesn't yeah. care about the newfangled, you know, present that we're living in. Yeah. You know, she likes she likes a little tradition. I bet she'd love it if you take out her trash every now and then. I'd take out the trash. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, you do that at my house all the time. I always, <laughs> I always get so embarrassed. Because, you know, I just, I'm so busy. I don't even think about it. And then I open it up and it's like... Just to the point where it won't fully close. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of this. In my head, <laughs> alarms are going off. Right. Eh, right. Eh, DEFCON 5 situation <laughs> critical meltdown imminent. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but you're like, ah, I can fit one more can in yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some. You know what? Sometimes you got to be okay to let things slide. Yeah. Especially last week when yeah. I, I know I, I spent most of the last few days like cleaning up after myself. Right. After a week of. Yeah. Oh, I'm sick. So I'm not going to put this paper towel in the trash two feet away. Right. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I get yeah, it. Yeah, that. It, it was that bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, I get it. I've been there. Yeah. I was actually really embarrassed because I accidentally left like three Kleenexes on a desk in an office that didn't have a trash can uh-huh. at my job. And um, I had fully intended to go back and clean them up before anyone saw them. But then I got pulled into a meeting. So they probably sat there for like an hour. And then when I got back to the office, one of my coworker friends was sitting there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I left my gross little rags here. Please let me just wipe down the whole desk. Aren't you an <laughs> animal? I am. Oh, and the ingredient in throat coat tea that I was thinking of, I think most of it does have echinacea. (laughs) Certainly not euthanasia. That's different. Right. Uh, The ingredient that coats your throat is slippery elm. Mm -hmm. So if you're a week behind us and you have the man flu or the consumption now, (laughs) um, yeah, Thayer's slippery elm lozenges Mm -hmm. are just great for keeping your throat uh, what uh lubricated slippery, slippery. yeah slippery um d- yeah. That, maybe that's why they call it uh-huh that the funny thing is we made this realization of what you were trying to say while watching an episode of family guy yeah <laughs> yeah yep. they were doing a boston tea party cutaway and they were talking about the different teas mm-hmm. and one said oh but it's got echinacea in it don't get rid of that one yeah oh don't get rid of the earl gray <laughs> we have to have breakfast oh don't get rid of the chamomile it helps me sleep <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. Well, and honestly, I get it because I love tea. Uh, have you ever tried Vicks on the feet? You know, I actually did do that once a while ago. And was it effective? You like you rub Vicks on your feet and then mm-hmm. put on socks and then go to sleep. Well, it was effective in the sense that it did make me feel better, but I can't sleep with socks on. Okay. So I could not sleep because my feet were constricted by um, actual boa constrictors. <laughs> and I thought I was being eaten alive. Uh-huh. So there was no sleep to be had with that until I finally kicked them off and just let them dry out. And that was fine. Okay. It, it, to <laughs> me that, you know, I hate sticky hands. Mm-hmm. And I really don't like a lot of oily, greasy stuff unless it's like a hamburger that I can manage in one sitting and then right. wash my hands and be mm-hmm. done with it, be cleansed of it. Yes. Yeah. 
I mean, I can't imagine walking to the bathroom in the middle of the night, um, just going squish, squish, squish. <laughs> oh, if you think that's bad. Ugh. So I think, I mean, you know how I do those peeling foot masks some, sometimes when my heels are really mm-hmm. like cracking and bad. Uh, so those things you have to wear for like an hour, two hours, something like that. I remember you talked me into one once. And I was like, oh yeah, and you were done with it in like ten minutes. I just this <laughs> creates more problems than it solves. Right, right. But yeah. you're saying your your Mexican likes Vicks. Yes, as a matter of fact, it's kind of a big thing in in uh, Mexican culture. Really, like there's lots of jokes on TikTok. Uh, so here's the thing: I experienced it firsthand through my Mexican and his family. But then I saw all of these memes on TikTok and realized it was kind of a bigger thing than that. They put it on everything. Everything. Like um, like Windex in my, my big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> right, right. Like, Greeks like, and Windex. Like you get a stab wound and, you're, and your Mexican mom is like, put some fix on it. You'll feel fine. Re- okay. All right. <laughs> my childhood equivalent of that was rub some dirt in it, kid. Yeah, I definitely got that a couple of times too. <laughs> Which also, ew. And no. And that's not how any of this works. Sort of a Pierce Brosnan follow-up from, again, my friend Kev, Mm. the most interesting man in the world. Don't tell me he's met him. No, he has not. But he said, do you remember the story? I guess, okay, uh, let me get this up here. Three guys Mm. were hiking in Yellowstone with a pan or a pot and a chicken. And and, and what they they were planning to go to a hot pot and literally cook a chicken in the hot pot. Well, they were uh, spotted by a park ranger and um, arrested and banned from the park. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have their names. It's, (laughs) oh, this is a New York Times article, by the way. I will say, first of all, though, the sense of humor on these guys. (laughs) Like and, it, and they think, seem like they'd be fun at parties. This was in 2020, so I mean, I, <laughs> maybe they were trying to make a TikTok video or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Eric Romrell and Eric Roberts of Idaho, and Dallas Funny. Roberts of Utah. I mean, honestly, though, <laughs> here's here's the thing: only <laughs> Idahoans and Utahns would have the foresight to understand how hot the the things are to the point where they four hundred degrees. Them. By the way, yeah, they wouldn't want to touch them. But they would risk cooking a chicken on them. Now, here's the thing. I just want to know the conversation that happened before. <laughs> you know what we should do? <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. All they needed was for the third guy to have a stick and a string. Yeah. And then there would have been no problem. Uh-huh. Well, okay. There would have been a problem, and here's why. Why? A pokes, a, 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 pokes, a park spokeswoman says, by the way... Um, It's illegal to touch or throw objects into the hot springs or other hydrothermal features at the park. Mm -hmm. It's illegal to go off the boardwalk and designated trails, a la what Pierce Brosnan is what um, charged with. Allegedly did. Right. And January 23rd, Mm -hmm. he appears in uh, Yeah, later this week. Right? Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. Now, it's illegal to touch it or throw things in it. But there's no rule about cooking chicken over it. So long as nothing falls in. It, if you have to go over the trail, though. The, I mean, and it, no, just maybe their you stick. got a 10-foot pole. That's what I'm saying. If just their stick with their pot and their chicken goes over, yeah. then they haven't thrown anything in it. Yeah. They haven't touched it. That would and they're on the boardwalk. Quite the feat of strength, I think. I mean, not, I mean Could a you hold pot? a 10-foot pole over a hot springs? Long enough to steam a chicken? <laughs> Let's find out, Carly. Let's go to Yellowstone and try it. You know what? If I- you're so confident in this idea. Okay, here's the thing. I'm just saying that if I were their lawyer, I'd be like, Your Honor, they did nothing wrong. <laughs> Last follow-up that leads us into our first story. We have word that Texas Roadhouse is going to open again on January 22nd. That's e- soon? Yeah. Really? I remember you saying six months. I dialed it down to three. Right. Well, come to find, I mean, it must not have been, I don't want to say, of course it was a big deal, but yeah, they're like three, is that three weeks? Okay. Between the fire happening and them reopening. I mean, that's great. Now we'll also have to wait to see if that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they probably have like a good corporate infrastructure behind them that can like send a bunch of specialists. Send to emergency clean it up. aid. Right. Right. Yeah. They have Texas Roadhouse FEMA. Yes. They have, yeah. They have TREMA. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they're losing profit, they got to get op- get it open as fast as possible. Well, yeah. And we talked about Texas Roadhouse 
chain or not, is an Idaho Falls institution. It's probably oh, yeah. the busiest place on a Friday night, and it has been for years. Oh, at yeah. least a handful, maybe more. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually think I had my first date at Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we love their filet medallions. Oh, they're so good. And then Reed's Dairy catches on fire. Yeah. What on earth? Right. What's going on here? And then uh, you were telling me about another fire in town. Yeah. So apparently there was a fire in one of the apartments in historic downtown. I just saw the picture. I didn't really read the article. I'm pretty sure I'm right. If I'm correct, it looks like the one that's in the alleyway between Treasures and the Kelt. Okay. Yeah. Um, My buddy Brad and I were talking about this Mm -hmm. and I'm like, all the, not all the, but these great Idaho Falls institutions are catching fire. And mm-hmm. he's like, dude, we need to call the IFFD right now and tell them to plant a fire truck in front of Papa Tom's. Right. Just to make sure that does not happen. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It, yeah. It's sort of the winter. It's the song of ice and fire. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you know, I actually used to live really close to there. You would walk Rango and he would just be fascinated by the cows. Yes. So I, so you know how they have the little petting zoo in the back? Yeah. I literally have a video of him giving a piggy a little kiss. Oh, it's my so gosh. cute. But yeah, I would go on like these super early morning walks around the neighborhood and we'd always, we'd always finish it. By going to Reed's Dairy and walking around the petting zoo so Ringo could smell all the little critters. So he so he will bark at another dog from 50 feet away, <laughs> but he'll kiss a pig on the snoot? Well, here's the thing. He'll bark at anything if it's far enough away and he knows he can be brave. Oh, but if it's close up, that's right. he'll be kind of quiet and be like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. And extremely important news, ladies and gentlemen, this week is Carly's birthday week. Oh, Mike, you shouldn't. Happy. (laughs) (laughs) I shouldn't. (laughs) Please don't abuse the uh, studio equipment. (laughs) Happy birthday to you. No, you got to sing it like Marilyn. Happy birthday to you. (laughs) She's all drugged out on Tylenol PM or whatever they had back then. (laughs) Happy birthday, Carly Morgan. (laughs) All right. God, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Did I tell you, uh, after last episode, I went to look at my cold stash to dig through and and, <clears throat> and get some more. I realized I had taken the Tylenol PM in, oh. instead of the regular Tylenol cold and flu. So as an early birthday celebration. Oh, yeah? We have, uh, we okay, I was going to introduce a new feature called What's in the Box? Oh, okay, good one, good one. But depending on your levels of pop culture <laughs> consumption, it's one of three things. Pandora's stuff, uh-huh. uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's head, uh-huh. or a dick. Oh, no. <laughs> Funny, either, either that's a Either Justin one. <laughs> Timberlake or Andy Sandberg's <laughs> Willie. <laughs> so we changed it to... What's in the bag? <clears throat> I see that you're reusing some of that great Hokkaido stuff. Yeah, the Hi- Hokkaido and Inamon uh-huh. and their packaging. This is the bag I was talking about. Look at this thing. I mean, it's sturdy AF. It's so sturdy. <laughs> and I now, uh, it, would you like to hazard a guess before I just hand it over? What's in the bag? A teapot. Short and stout? I don't think so. No? Um. Okay, it's heavy. Maybe a... A pheasant. (laughs) (laughs) It is not a pheasant, but it is a present. So go ahead and Ah, open it. Well, they rhyme at least. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, okay. And tell me what you think. Oh, shit. Oh, no. (laughs) It's a small present. This is terrible. (laughs) It's a dream come true. (laughs) Literally. Just a really terrible, terrible dream. And you know what? This is exactly the one that it was, too. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, with know. the pop top and everything. I wasn't sure. Yeah, in the dream, it got so hot that the top popped, and then steam came out of it. And then, yeah. So, for all of you who haven't heard about this, I made the cardinal sin of talking about my dream when no one gives a shit. Even, even, yeah, even though our rule on this show is no one gives a shit about your dreams. And in case you notice that the bag still has half, there's two sets of them. I hope yeah. that this is because you plan on... Embarking on this journey with I'm, me. I am. Oh. We're going to do this. Are we actually going to do this? We are. Okay, but for right it to be accurate, the we do need to heat this up. Yeah, we'll, 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 uh, there, there will be an edit. There have already been several because someone got lazy and we're just, we're just doing straight cuts now. We don't yeah, care. It's cool. It's cool. I mean, we, we do, but man, that adds a lot of time. 
But uh, in your dream, so, okay, first let's, for the listening audience, let's say what this is. Yeah. It's Chef Boyard. it's a can of Chef Boyardee mini ravioli. Mm-hmm. And uh, some jet puffed marshmallow cream. Oh, this you, is- You know this. And in your dream, yeah, okay, so the can of ravioli steamed up, opened up. So it magically appeared on my bed and was so hot that the top popped open and steam came flying out. And I was like, oh, what's that ravioli doing there? Well, I mean, if it's already heated up, I guess I should eat it. Okay. So I get up out of bed in my dream and I'm just like eating it like a like a heathen, just scooping it into my mouth. Mm-hmm. Like if you walked into my room, you would have thought that I was like a demon, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> yeah, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then, for some reason, mid scoop, I turn around and look at my nightstand and see none other than a nice fluffy can of jet puffed. <laughs> and I'm like, "You are ridiculous." I'm my my subconscious certainly is. Uh, so, okay, for this to be as authentic as possible, how we need to do it is we need to heat up the ravioli, mm-hmm. and then we need to put our finger in the jet puffed. Swirl it around. In in the jar itself. Yeah, in the jar itself. Give it a little scoop, swirl it around. I was going to get us some nice ramekins, but whatever oh, we, well, you we say. Could do, we can do ramekins, but okay. we, we got to eat it with our hands. I can't just take a sip? No. No? No. That's and we disgusting. have disgusting. It. It's going to be, that's the point. It was a gross dream and I felt gross having it. And now you guys have to feel gross watching it. Okay, we're back after a quick trip to the IFAF test kitchen, which is about 50 feet that way. And we have our, as you can clearly see, if if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you're listening, of course, uh, you can't see. But if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you'll see we have some clear ramekins so you can clearly Uh see the Chef Boyardee mini ravioli Mm -hmm. With nothing up our sleeves. (laughs) Right. And... The jet puffed marshmallow, man, it's got a satisfying, like when you pull uh-huh. the, the tab up, it kind of goes poof. Yeah, so, so kind of foams see, up like a sodi pop. Yeah, you yeah. can see the jet puffed marshmallow <laughs> yeah. cream yeah. coming over the top of that. Oof. Yeah. Okay, so what's the drill? Ravioli first? No. No. Okay, so in my dream, I took my finger. So I'd, I'd had some ravioli, but then I licked my hands clean. Okay. Dipped my finger in. Here we go. Swirled it around a little. So... It was like a like a this. A real good swirl. Give it, it a real it a good. Little, we're just going right in there. A little bit of that. <laughs> right? This is the grossest thing I've done <laughs> Oh, in the last two weeks. It's about to get worse. <laughs> okay. And then I stuck my finger through a ravioli oh, in the You dream. didn't mention that part. Oh, yeah. We're going to. And it won't work, actually, because these are the mini ones. But oh. you know what? We're going to just have to use two fingers. But I gave it like a good scoop in when fingers. I did it. <laughs> So yeah, like this. These are slippery little buggers. <laughs> I can't quite. Okay, there we go. I think I got one. Watch me drip this down the front of my shirt for the hmm. rest of the show. Okay, honestly, it's about how I imagined it in my dream, and it's not that bad. Okay, like realistically, if a pregnant woman is, if a pregnant woman is watching this, she will be absolutely vexed and perplexed until she off. tries it. Yeah. And once she does, her husband will have to go to so many runs of getting jet of marshmallow and ravioli because this is not that bad. If I were starving, <laughs> right? I would, I'd hit it. It's honestly kind of good. And to be fair, I think that's because um, a lot of American processed foods have like way too much sugar in them. Right. So, you know, the sweetness of the ravioli matches the sweetness of the jet puff marshmallow cream. Well, and I would say that the um, marshmallow cream, here we are being critics. <laughs> I would say that the marshmallow cream's vanilla creaminess nicely offsets the um, savory, salty tomato base. Right. That we're sort of experiencing here. Honestly, I'd do it again. I'm going to have a shot of uh, Chef Boyardee real quick. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, like oysters? Like you, Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like it's an oyster slider. <laughs> it's a mini ravioli slider. <laughs> Remember his story in the foods that built America? Man, that's a fascinating show mm. on Hulu. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. I actually think I fell asleep at the very end of it. Okay. But I remember the beginning well, we know of it. How it I was ends. like, oh my gosh. I mean, yeah, right. It ends with him creating a product that you dream about. <laughs> yeah, that I literally dream about, man. And mix with the... 
Well, uh, don't you uh, jet puff marshmallow cream? Yeah. No, you're right. It's 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 um, <clears throat> it is what it is. It's good. I fully accept my present set of circumstances as if I have chosen them because I have. <laughs> You chose it more than me. You ambushed me with this stuff. <laughs> you know what, though? That's your penance. And I love that you're like, happy birthday. Here's a consequence. <laughs> That's what you get for talking about your dream. <laughs> you know, actually. This is literally Carly's dream food. Okay. I actually think that is a perfect natural consequence <laughs> to talking about your dream because no one cares. Everyone right. knows this. So, yeah. But apparently I do care. But to make it interesting... Mike may put on a tough exterior, but he's got a heart of gold. <laughs> right, right. I, I really do. I was thinking about my own personal branding, not to make it about me for just one second. <laughs> but I, I, I think now I own the adorable asshole image, and I want to kind of move that to the um, enthusiastic encourager image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like Zeke in Bob's Burgers. He's right. the unsung hero of Bob's Burgers. He's so good, and he's so funny. So, yeah, in an effort to be my true self, yeah, I want to buy you more <laughs> Chef Boyardee mini ravioli and <laughs> Jet Puff marshmallow cream stuff. Yeah, I love that. Right. That's a great combo. <laughs> I'll be your. I'll be the Jet Puff marshmallow cream to your Chef Boyardee mini ravioli. <laughs> I'll tell. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to be Chef Boyardee. I'll and you know that. what? I'll let you even be a full size ravioli. Okay. I think you deserve it. That's overly generous of yeah. you, and of course, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Namaste and shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right can we go wash our hands real quick yes okay cool <laughs> while we're on the food tip can we bookmark one thing yeah mike and lobster so oh, yeah yeah i'm uh, 20 years ago i developed a lobster allergy out of mm -hmm. the blue mm -hmm. and not to get gross but real quick ate some lobster three hours later puking up black ink basically man sounds like my honeymoon just a yeah <laughs> yeah when you had your squid and ink uh -huh. but a couple of months ago at brunch you gave me what you thought was some salmon eggs Benedict. Right. Come to find out it was lobster eggs Benedict, and I didn't get sick. So I'm wondering, has my allergy come full cycle? Maybe. And could I go back to eating lobster? So here's a promise I'm going to mm -hmm. make to you. We're going to go find the best lobster in town, and I'm going to have a couple of healthy bites. Oh. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to mm -hmm. jump on this grenade for you, our three listeners who care about <laughs> something like this. And we're just going to find out. We're going to do a little experiment. Okay, but you have to do it when you have no obligations. Right, no commitments. Yeah. So be ready for That's that. That's going to be tough, but... <laughs> no obligations and tons of Gatorade. I was sick for three days and recovering for two at least this week mm -hmm. and somehow got away with it. That's true. I was true. able to do a lot of work from home, so... Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then as I organize this show, I always... Like, what do I do with the leftovers? What do I do with the non-stories? Oh. So can we just bang them out real quick? We can bang anything out real quick. All right. <laughs> Winco will pay a $3.6 million settlement for a class action lawsuit stemming from hidden clean energy surcharges is the headline. In reality, I think it's just one store or their chain of stores in Portland. Basically, mm -hmm. they were doing a 10 cent energy surcharge that they didn't really tell people about. Oh. And you know, I'm a huge fan of Winco. Yeah. So my attitude is who cares? I mean, I kind of get it. Sure. And uh, like, here's the thing. At the end of the day, if you're taking my money, I better know why. Right. And also like, but it's Winco. Yes. <laughs> Completely agreed. Yeah. I have, I have a, I remember Winco. Who remembers this? I remember Winco when they were originally Wear Mart, mm. way out on the Northgate Mile across the street from the Sugar Shell. Wow. How's that? Oh, I know the building. Next, if you're not familiar with Club Shay Shay, which is a very popular podcast by one Shannon somebody or other. Oh, the football guy. Yeah, the football guy. Yeah. He had one of the first memes of 2024 was he had Cat Williams on. Yes. And Cat Williams got a little, uh, he got a little Hennessy'd up and started bagging on Cedric the Entertainer uh -huh. and Steve Harvey and th that whole club. Kevin Hart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think. What? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. So also, was it Hennessy or was it Crown? It was Hennessy. Okay. Crown was Polly Shore, who uh, did okay. the most brilliant parody <laughs> mm -hmm. of Cat Williams' meltdown. <clears throat> Honestly, this could bring Polly Shore back in my mind. He's right. back. He's he's so good at it. Oh, in fact, he is back, right? Yes. Yeah. He's actually going to be playing Richard Simmons in a new biopic. 
about him, which Richard Simmons is not okay with, by the way. Yes, it's unauthorized or whatever. Yeah. The producers say they're going to respect his privacy, but are going to move forward with the project anyway. So, Which sounds a lot like not respecting their privacy. But don't (laughs) you... It feels a little like, I'm not touching you. Right, (laughs) right. (laughs) But doesn't Polly Shore look just like Richard Simmons? I mean... As soon as I saw that that bit, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, what is Richard Simmons doing here? And then Polly Shore's voice came out. I cannot wait for the movie. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, and especially because my cousin and I loved Richard Simmons when we were kids. Did you sweat to the oldies? We did. Yeah. Okay. First of all, you know I'm an old soul anyway. All right. But um, so one thing that we would love to do is we'd watch his workout videos. <laughs> and the the one that always stuck out to us was he does this line where he's like, wash the windows, wash the windows, get the little ones, get the little ones. And also, you know how you're he, waving for the people that can't see you're waving your hands yeah, in front of you. Yeah, you do like, um, you know, larger circles and then smaller circles for the little ones. Wow. OK. Yeah. Anyway. What a memory. <laughs> right, right. I, I honestly <laughs> couldn't stand the guy, but I certainly recognized, you know, I would, if he was on the TV, I'd switch the channel, but I certainly <laughs> recognized his place in the pop culture pantheon. Oh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, as a matter of fact, my cousin uh, actually had a pair of little shiny green shorts that she'd wear all the time. And everyone in the family called them her Richard Simmons shorts. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, you can instantly picture probably a green that straight out of the Barbie movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, honestly, I think that that's what uh, Ken wears during the um, roller skating scene. <laughs> and I want to take back a little bit. I I loved Richard Simmons when he was talking. Right. Because he was a little bit catty, honey. Yeah. You know? He was good. I think he and Joan Rivers did some stuff together. I I vaguely, vaguely remember that. When he was like, work it, go for it, move your arms. I was like, mm-hmm. click. Maybe right. it's exercise that I don't like. <laughs> you know what? That actually tracks. <laughs> I get that. I don't like exercising either. I, I have to feel like I'm doing something productive in order to exercise and running on the like running on the treadmill doesn't feel productive. It feels a lot like I'm, I don't know, what's a good metaphor? Uh, running in place. Yes, right. You like to run... Uh, outside and stuff. I mean, you like yeah. to run two places oh. instead of running in place. Yeah. But I can't wait to see the wheeze. Wheeze in the juice. Remember Encino Man? No. Okay. No. Um, Brendan I actually Fraser. never saw Encino Man. Pa- what? I know. I know. Oh, you'd love Brendan Fraser back in the day. If you I loved the whale, love- if you liked Brendan Fraser in the whale, <laughs> you'll love Brendan Fraser in Encino Man. <laughs> I mean, I saw him in The Mummy. Okay. Do you understand yeah. how many people became bisexual because of that <laughs> yes. movie? The entire cast was just super hot. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Every single one. Just hot. Perhaps the biggest Idaho Falls news last week, Idaho Falls Mayor Rebecca Casper delivered the 2024 State of the City Address. Mm-hmm. And boy, she's a great speaker, isn't she? Yeah, I could listen to her all day. She was good. She was good. Yeah. At the very least, it was certainly a lot of news. Mm-hmm. There was tons in there about Idaho Falls. So if you have a chance to watch it, do go and watch it because it's got a lot of information. Go to the City of Idaho Falls <clears throat> Facebook page. And this might be a good time for me to gently... Um, remind the city of Idaho Falls that lots of people are on YouTube too. Mm -hmm. And I think they've only posted, they only posted like two or three videos in all of 2023. I'll also very gently point out that uh, YouTube is a much better video player. And I accidentally exited out of this one like four times while I was trying to watch it because somehow my palm bumped the screen in a way that Facebook didn't like. There's YouTube apps on Roku and Apple TV. Whereas with Facebook, you've got to cast it. So your phone's tied up kind of. And it was a pain, but just a gentle reminder to the city of Idaho Falls that as we grow, um, and that's what her speech was basically was a politician talking about how well we're doing mostly, I think, right? Um, yeah. but, but it was honest, but as we grow as a city, let's also grow technologically, right? Which we kind of have with the whole fiber thing. Yes. What did she say? 95% cool. of Idaho Falls proper uh-huh. is now covered with fiber. You now have the option to have Idaho Falls fiber if you so choose. Mm-hmm. And this is another great opportunity for me to plug my favorite ISP for Idaho Falls Fiber, because you know you have to pay the $25 infrastructure fee to the mm-hmm. city and then also pay a um, an ISP for your service. Right. Uh, quicknet, qwk.net. Now, one of the things that she did bring up that I was so excited about, 
and that I really had to kick myself for because I knew about it before the state of the city that she did um, is that they're actually building an all access bathroom at the all access park in Tophis. Well, that makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, and here's the funny thing. So I was watching one of my friend's kids the, uh, a while ago and he wanted to go to the park and he very specifically said he wanted to go to the one at Tophis with the blue mat or the blue flooring. I don't know what you call it, but um I knew which one it was because I remember uh, the first time I ever knew about it was in uh, high school and everyone was like, dude, it's so cool. You got to go, which is weird for high schoolers to say, but small towns, you know how it is. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Start for entertainment. Yeah. They're like, yeah, let's go to the park at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so I took the kid there. We were playing around and there were some guys working on a structure behind a fence and he was like, oh, I wonder what they're building. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, do you want to ask him? And he's like, you can do that. And I was like, yeah, dude, they might even answer. <laughs> you can actually go up to people and talk to them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But in this day and age of, uh, you know. Well, you know, he didn't see the little floating A button above their head. Right. So he didn't think he could interact. They, they thought they were non-playable NPCs, non-playable <laughs> yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah, but the NPCs that don't talk, they just walk around. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we went over to those N NPCs that you can talk to, and we interacted with them and asked, hey, what you guys building? And they're like, oh, we're building a bathroom. And I was like, about time. First of all, the fact that more parks don't have easily findable and accessible bathrooms close to the playground. Yeah. First of all, do you know how small baby bladders are? Uh -huh. Do you know how small my bladder is? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, I just want to be able to go to the park with a kid or not. You know what? I like swings too and I'm an adult and that's that. <laughs> Let's okay? go swinging this summer. <laughs> so different when you're an adult. Dang right, it. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Anyway. No upside down pineapples here. No, no. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, yeah, I Google would like, <laughs> I would like to be able to go to a park, have a nice picnic and not have to like scour the area yeah. for a restroom. Yeah. You know? Uh, and I'm one of those people that I don't, oftentimes recognize my physical needs until it's almost too late. Like when I, I don't feel hungry. I'm starving mm -hmm. right now. Right, That's right. my tummy voice. <laughs> um, if I have to pee, I have to go right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, and another thing that I thought was really cool that she mentioned is that they're expanding the airport and be, and I guess in hand with that, they're actually working to create a route to LA which is awesome because I have a cousin who lives in LA who visits all the time and I'd love to make it nice and easy for her. Well, I know Allegiant flies to LAX, right? Well, yeah. Not, but not always. Some, well, I think they have all And it's got a connecting flight. So I think they're oh, working on a, a, gotcha. a single. A direct route. Direct. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm so good at the words today. <laughs> that would be hot, especially for everybody who, you know, goes to Disneyland from here. Are right. you kidding? Well, and how nice would it be for the fares to actually be decent enough that we don't have to drive all the, all the way down to Salt Lake? Because I'm so sick of that. I actually know the West Coast uh, Vice President of Promotion for Disneyland. Yes. And um, I tried talking into... So Disneyland has a few target markets. Believe it or not, pretty much everybody east of the Rockies goes to Disney World. Mm-hmm. But Disneyland focuses on, you know, that are these are five, six, let's see, from north to south, they are Seattle, Portland, Salt Lake City, Denver, San Francisco, LA, and San Diego, seven. Mm -hmm. That's all they focus on. And I tried to convince her to make Idaho Falls a target market too. So well, they're growing enough. Right. So the radio stations or, you know, podcasters could do uh -huh. promotions with them. You know, <laughs> I mean, our first episode was about Disneyland. It was. Okay. Now I want to do a quick honorable mention for one of my favorite parts of the entire broadcast, which was when she went to cut to the city activities and operations slideshow. And it just showed her the whole time as oh, she was man. like drinking water and like watching it. Uh -huh. And the whole time I was like, couldn't pan the camera. <laughs> Had to leave it right there. Okay, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Maybe work on the camera a little. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, right. Uh -huh. But my all-time... They had a wide shot, didn't they? They had a wide shot and then a zoom in, no? Well, th that's the thing. They did, but they stuck to they the didn't zoom use in. It. Oh, funny. Yeah. But my all-time favorite part of the entire thing was when Rebecca Casper apologized for using the word crappy and oh. said that she was so sorry because it wasn't elegant. I'm so shocked. <laughs> Madam Mayor. I mean, what a terrible C word for you to use. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and anyway. <laughs> crappy. We're talking about the word crappy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Rebecca, that is why you are IFAF this week. Crisp high five. Whoosh, 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew. 
which I think political people get, right? Sometimes, or is it just military? I don't know. I don't know. And uh, Chef's Kiss to you <laughs> and your fabulous 2024 State of the City Address. So we don't usually attribute our sources on this show because most of the time there are none. It's just we heard or we saw. Also, we're heathens. And then we put it into our own words. And mm -hmm. right, yeah, I mean, but again, not the news. Yeah. No. Okay. We're just your buddies by the water cooler. <laughs> we don't have to tell you where we heard it. Yeah. Yeah. And we might have some of the facts wrong. But I think it's important to make attribution in this case to the Idaho statesman, the people with the horrible logo that we made fun of. Mm. Uh, well, the, I mean, uh, if the shoe fits. Of the top 100. Anyway, Idaho lawmakers sent a bill aimed at restricting library books that are harmful to minors to the House floor <sighs> after two hours of public testimony. As I understand it, most of the testimony was not in favor of, you know, banning books. Yeah. Okay. Stifling free speech. And I also want to mention that the Florida School District has already done that. They've pulled dictionaries, encyclopedias, uh, from the library over sexual content, because think of the children. Now, I might be getting a little too upset here, but it's because I'm a bit of an advocate against censorship mm -hmm. in any form. You know, th that whole fact-checking fiasco, when now we know that some of the stuff that Facebook fact-checked and removed mm -hmm. is actually true. Fauci even going back and saying, yeah, six feet was kind of bullshit. Sorry, guys. You know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What I want to say here is, and I'm pointing fingers. Mike, are you pointing fingers? You bet I am. We talk about the woke culture as being primarily a function or a feature of the left. And if I were to define woke culture, I would say it's when feelings are more important than facts. And in this case, I think the right is guilty of it. Mm -hmm. You know what happens after book banning, right? Right. Right, exactly. I don't want to say Hitler. I don't want to say World War II and genocide. Mm -hmm. But but we live in the information age, do we not? Not well, just the mm -hmm. not just the information age, but the organization and mm -hmm. easily access of information age. Right. Well, and also why are we still talking about banning books? And also, so many people are just illiterate nowadays. Yeah. Like, there don't worry, no one's going to read it. Kid, well, for, there is that too. <laughs> but also, kids are struggling more and more to read. And if the thing that gets them to decide to read is that they want to look up penis in the dictionary and giggle about it like school children do, well, I'd look, let I, them. I don't think, you know, minors should be reading Canterbury Tales, although I'm pretty sure it was recommended uh, to us. Even in high if school. they didn't, they couldn't understand it. I know it. I took a class on medieval literature and I barely understood it as a collegiate. Well, we, we <laughs> talked a lot last episode about, holy crap, I can't believe they said that in songs back in the day. Yeah. But I realized, you know, they use language that kids just, it goes right over their head. Right. Well, and you know what book has a lot of profanity and incest and uh, murder and rape? Uh, the Bible. I think I know what you're going to say. The Bible. Well, in so many of the books that they're banning, they're banning because the part in the book that was supposed to be offensive as part of the story, they found offensive. Like... For example, um, the N-word in Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, or um, the racism in To Kill a Mockingbird. Right. The whole point is that you, the reader, are supposed to be disgusted by the That's racism the in the books. That's the point. It helps you build empathy, dudes. Very well said. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, and frankly, as someone who has an English degree that is completely useless, that I spent <laughs> way too much money on, if we could go ahead and change the subject so I don't have to get upset, right. that would be so great. <laughs> okay, I've got one for you. Don't okay. you hate it when you diligently snow blow or even shovel your driveway in the winter, mm -hmm. and then you just know the city of Idaho Falls snow plows are going to come along and you're going to have to do oh. a second shovel mm -hmm. because of that little berm, snow berm that is created, snow speed bump mm -hmm. that's created at the end of your driveway. Right. Which is also why I just don't plow my driveway. I just, <laughs> I just drive on snow. <laughs> you just hit that speed bump. <laughs> yeah. It can be really annoying, though. It can be bad for your concrete. Right. But somebody posted this perhaps useful infographic on how you can eliminate or at least mitigate the second shovel. Oh, okay. And that is when you do shovel, shovel, clear out some spot. We were talking last week about clearing out space for the mailbox, mail carrier. Right. Yes. Uh huh. Clear out some space for the snow plow guy. Oh, I don't know, five, 10 feet to the left of your driveway so that the snow from the snow plow 
can fill that space up and then not have any snow payload to deliver right in front of your driveway okay. because it's already dumped it in the 10 feet of space you've cleared for it. I think I get it. We've got an infographic up. Take a look. It might have some value or it might be total bullshit. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Yeah. Or what if instead you built your own snow berm and then when they come down your street and they plow all the snow, they just add to it. What? So eventually... You have a fortress made of snow and ice, like Elsa. <laughs> Do you want to build a snow berm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Elsa can send it all up into the air and make her castle. Yeah, right. That's great thinking, Carly. Yeah, I thought so. Always so practical. <laughs> okay, one thing coming up, January 27th at noon at Club Apple. It's the 2024 Polar Plunge. Right, and it's only 10 bucks a person, huh? and it goes toward charity. Yeah, it does. Really great charities, too. Mm -hmm. uh, the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission and the Shannon Wilker Foundation, both just fantastic charities. Right. Now, that being said, terrible idea for a charity, for a, a fundraiser. Here's why. Okay. Why do you want to get cold? <laughs> why would you want to do this? This sounds terrible. It's it sort of captures the imagination, though, doesn't it? I would rather pay money to not do it. I mean, this sounds like a typical uh, radio station stunt. I know in right. my years I did several of these, even participated in a few. Right. There's freezing for a reason. There's, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, boy, it's a shock to the system. Yeah, that sounds just awful. A whole lot of no thanks from me, dog. <laughs> right. I hope that they fill the pool at Club Apple with at least a couple of ice cubes. Right, right. You know, make it a literal ice bath. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think that's fair. Yeah. Now, that being said, if they're going to do it, I have an idea of how they can make even more money. Okay. Okay. So you've got the polar plunge part, right? I'd pay you double to not do it. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> I'll pay you 20 bucks if you just let me off the... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But okay, so you've got like the polar plunge part, right? Mm -hmm. You already pay $10 for that. Mm -hmm. But at the very end As that they don't tell you about, you can add on and get a hot tub plunge <gasps> afterward for another 10 bucks. I guarantee you, you would double your profits. You know what? We throw out million dollar ideas mm -hmm. every week on this show. Mm -hmm. I hope you're listening, people. Right. And probably the shock to your system both ways would probably like, you know, hurt a lot of people. But so long as they sign a waiver first, it's fine. I would almost <laughs> want like a three for, and here's what I mean. Soak as long as I want in the hot tub, Uh huh. run out into the snow and jump in the pool and uh -huh. do, do my duty. And then jump back out and back into the hot tub for another couple minutes. I think that would cost you 30 bucks. <laughs> that, okay. Yeah. All right. There, we, <laughs> there. Now we've tripled your money. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So I got this weird ad on Facebook for Cheech and Chong's Cruise Chews. On Facebook? Yeah. You remember Cheech and Chong, right? Well, yeah. I, I'm just kind of baffled that of all the platforms, that's the one it shows up on. We're going to get to that and why that's so weird here in just <laughs> yeah. a sec. Uh, to set it up, Cheech and Chong were a comedy duo first. They mm -hmm. had a few albums. They were a little edgier than the Smothers Brothers. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, but um, then they had a series of, what, 70s and 80s movies? I remember the cover of Up in Smoke because they had this huge joint uh -huh. that they were smoking that was taller than you. Oh. Like it was comically <laughs> huge. Oh, so it kind of looked like um, Frodo in that one scene with the spiders. <laughs> and that's how you know I'm a nerd. <laughs> Well, and you remember when we came back from our very first episode one vacation uh -huh. and stopped at Planet 13, the world's largest dispensary in Las Vegas, we saw that they had some gummies. Right. Yeah. So now they are shipping well, them. I mean, I almost remembered it. <laughs> yeah. Kidding, kidding. We, uh, now um, they are shipping to all 50 states. Look at this ad. All of them, Mike? Are you sure? They say, yes, we can ship to your state. And then there's an asterisk. And then it says, not you, Idaho. What did we do? So we, I, well, right. What, what's well, wait, going on? Wait, wait, wait. Do they have THC in them? Okay. I'm glad you asked. Because apparently, Carl, did you know that under the 2018 Farm Bill, hemp derived products that contain less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC, whatever that is, are perfectly legal. 
In fact, they send them using the United States Postal Service. Okay, now is that an indica or a sativa? I don't, I don't <laughs> know. Kidding. Sorry, that's a joke. <laughs> I guess you have to be 21 or older to get them, but I'm wondering, okay, if... I know weed isn't legal in all 50 states. Right. But if it's only 0.3% Delta 9 THC, and then they combine the rest with mm-hmm. um, like CBD. Right. Okay. okay. Which is available it's, here in Idaho. In yeah. Idaho Falls, we have a couple of CBD shops. Uh-huh. At least a couple. I guess it's kind of like non-alcoholic beer. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking it's like a low, it's like getting, ordering a low-level beer or a low-level wine. And then- Watering it down some more. But here's what boggles me. Even Utah. Yeah. Idaho is the only state. Let's look at this again. Well, and we appreciate farming. What the hell? It is the <laughs> only state. Right. Yeah. It, we're the so o- we have some law where you can't get any? I, I remember or- hearing that Governor Brad Little won't allow any THC in the state as long as he's governor. Or whatever. So I don't know if somebody's standing on principle or there's a tail wagging the dog somewhere. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and, and I'm not complaining, by the way. I don't care. I just think it's hilarious and Idaho related mm-hmm. to see this ad on my Facebook saying, eh, 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 you right. can't have it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you wanted some. Yeah. Like, like they, Facebook knows where you are. Yeah. And they're showing you the one person who can't have it. Like, that's just bad advertising. It is. It's They're wasting yeah. their money. Yeah. You know, if, if you've seen Funny. the end too. But, hmm. oh, and in fact. Um, and also, can I just mention, that governor has totally tried weed before. Allegedly. <laughs> you think I'm, so? I'm alleging. Yes, I do. But Come he probably on. didn't inhale. Yeah, right, right. He was just around. He went to a rock concert once in the 60s. <laughs> right, right. Come on, dude. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Okay, uh, next one. Now, oftentimes we will get unintentionally dirty. Uh, <laughs> this, however, lends itself to it. So we're probably <laughs> going to end on this. Maybe uh-huh. have one more thing for you. Have you heard of a, well, it's a little gas station in the Midwest, I believe, called Come and Go. I mean, that's a name. And, and it's spelled K-U-M. Oh, wow. And go. Yeah. Man, I mean, at least it wasn't C U M, right? You know, like at least it's a little different. But also, why why change the spelling of come? It's four letters. It's fine. Check out this Family Guy sign for Cream Queen. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a fake business on their right, show, right? But the marquee says, "We came up with the name in the 1940s before everything got dirty." <laughs> and I get it. We all yearn for a more innocent time, don't we? Oh, sure. I know that there's, so are all these businesses that have, you know, dirty names now going to change them? I know there's a Dick's Burgers in Seattle, so you can literally eat a bag of Dick's. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to mention, we've got a Dick's here too. Yeah, Dick's Sporting, Sporting Goods. Goods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we got a Sofa King. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but that one's more of a vocal joke than a visual joke. Our sofas aren't just comfy. They're Sofa King comfy. <laughs> Well, and we've got Beaver Dick Park. Yes, we talked about that. Yeah. Earlier last year, we went mm-hmm. to Sausage Fest right. at Beaver Dick Park. Mm-hmm. And there's a petition to change the name of Beaver Dick Park. Don't sign it. How dare you? But Beaver Dick was a famous trapper who, by the way, got his nickname from Brigham Young. Mm-hmm. So how dare you uh, not uh, honor the words of a prophet? No. Um. So moving on. <laughs> Come and Go has been purchased by, well, here's the connection, <sighs> Maverick. Oh. Who's based in Utah. Oh, so they're definitely going to change the name then, I'm guessing. They're definitely going to change their name. (laughs) Yeah, I can't say I blame them. Come and go will become Maverick. Yeah. Well, and (laughs) and, you know, it's kind of a bummer because Come and Go really is a kind of genius name for a gas station if it didn't have any of the connotations. Yeah, back in the 1940s. Right. Right. Because like all it is is people coming and going and getting their gas and being on their way. Yeah. You know, like it makes sense. The spelling is unfortunate, mostly because it's stupid. Um, <laughs> well, and a lot of things come and go. Fashion mm-hmm. trends, the seasons, karma chameleon. <laughs> Baby daddies. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least they weren't these names. We're going to leave you with this list. How about pump and dump? Oof. <laughs> at least it wasn't jizz and jet. <laughs> or, you know, skeet and yeet. <laughs> Shoot and scoot. Splash and dash. Nut and bolt. Okay. (laughs) 
funny. And also, I do think that Splash and Dash could still work. Sure. If it's a car wash. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We, we need that. Uh, my personal favorite, ejaculate and evacuate. <laughs> Or, you know, mm-hmm. just plain orgasm and leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like what Sheldon says. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> when he wants you to get out of his house after a nice night of coitus. <laughs> okay. We're done. That's our show. Thanks for oh, listening. Terrible. Thanks for watching. Um, maybe we could leave them with something to cleanse their, their palate a little bit. Yes. How about a palate cleanser? Yeah. <laughs> between yeah. us and your next mm-hmm. internet adventure. Yeah. Uh, the wise and powerful Mo, my good friend from Milwaukee that sent that really cool animation earlier. Right, yeah. Um, it, or, you know, a few episodes back. Uh-huh. Sent me some amazing footage of snow plows working in tandem. I think there That's are. That's cool. And it, this could be Milwaukee. and I didn't ask, but it could be any major city. Right. But, you know, any city that's got five lanes on a freeway. Mm-hmm. There are five snow plows working, but I especially want you to watch if you're watching. Otherwise, you'll just hear our theme music for a minute. Mm-hmm. There are five snow plows working in tandem. One is up front on the left. Then there's one a little bit behind him. And then one in the next lane over uh-huh. to the right. One, And then it just keeps going uh-huh. until the sixth uh, driver, I think the sixth truck, is the real hero here. Right. He's sort of the cleanup pickup truck. Yeah, he's the one who gets it all the way off the road. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is just, I thought it was an amazing video. Thank you, Mo, mm-hmm. for sending it to us. Really appreciate you. In fact, he, he put a little visual treat at the end. See if you can catch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, go w- ahead and watch these snow plows plow the snow better than I plow your mom. <laughs> <laughs> but just watch this. Isn't it incredible? Remember, give those snow plows wide berth. Mm-hmm. Be kind, be cool to other drivers, be patient. Have a great week until we see you next time. Sniffing blue.